Hi guys, welcome to this very special behind the scenes of the Invicta Collective. My name is Matthew. I am one of the story creators for the Invicta Collective. And I'm here with John Winshead, who's our director and kind of just creator in general. And uh, we're here to kind of talk about how this project came into being and share a little kind of uh, fun information about all the things we've done to get to this stage. So John, uh, do you want to start by telling us a little bit about yourself and some of the projects you've done? So yes, my name is Jonathan Winstead, and I have, uh, haven't done a whole lot of projects, but I've done several over the years. Um, I've done a lot of stuff for like local businesses and different things, a lot of freelance work. Um, but the first project that I've really made for public consumption per se under my name was a remake of an old Shadow episode from like the, uh, the radio serials mm -hmm. from, like, the 40s. And um, mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite shows. Old Time Radio is where I started getting a love for audio drama. And uh, I had wanted to make something for years in that realm, but I didn't want to make something that was uh, like disturbing for people to listen to, like really bad where... Like, you know, I wish you wouldn't have made that, you know, so um, yeah. I didn't go to I didn't go to college yeah. for uh, editing and things like that. I've just kind of learned as I've went along a lot of YouTube tutorial videos and stuff like that when I can't figure something out. Um, so I just kind of did that episode as like a as a test to see if I could make something that even made sense or sounded halfway decent and mm. uh, kind of got thrown out into the public more than I anticipated with that one. Um, but it was good. People seemed to like it. Um, and yeah. so I just said, well, let's pull out the stops and go a little bit further. And so the next project I made after that was one called Uncharted the Hidden Kingdom, which was a fan project uh, that we did using the characters from the Sony games, uh, the Uncharted series. So um, that was a really fun project, had a lot of really talented yeah. people that were willing to like volunteer their time and effort on that. Since it was a fan project, we can't make any money off of it, obviously. Um, did try to get licensing for it, but um, couldn't really get in the door at Sony, which I'm not surprised. I mean, so, someday. I have, <laughs> have a lot of connections. Yeah, maybe someday. Who knows? <laughs> um, but we decided to do it as a fan project just for the love of the series. And uh, so there's a lot of really talented people, like I said, got involved with that and lent their time and their talents. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we ended up winning some awards. Uh, we had uh, Nolan North and uh, Richard McGonagall and Emily Rose. They all got a chance to listen to it. They said that they enjoyed it. Got the videos up on the website for that. So that was pretty cool. Um, so then after that, I thought, well, maybe we could try to make some original stuff, like totally original. I mean, the Uncharted one was an original story, mm -hmm. but not original characters. And so um, at this point, just trying to make some original things that so we did a or I did a, um, a zombie story, uh, which is making some rounds right now. We've actually won a few awards for that best thriller at the L.A. Web Fest yeah. this year. Uh, best um, uh, best thriller and best sound design, actually, which was pretty cool. Um, then we got to the but silver level in the Here Now, uh, the Here Now podcast Palooza this year, which was nice. Um, but that was just a just a one time, not not a series. But uh, this mm -hmm. next project that we're trying to do, the one that you're helping with, is the Invicta Collective, and um, I guess that's what we're here to talk about a little bit more in depth about. But yeah, I mean, considering, you know, how, you know, relatively few projects you've put out publicly and you've won so many awards, I think it's really, you know, amazing the journey that you've kind of been on and to be a part of that is, is really exciting for me. And it, it seems like you have a passion for these adventure stories that that's kind of what they seem to be a lot about is kind of pulp fiction stories. Is that something that you kind of inspired you like as a, as a kid in that? Absolutely. My my favorite movie of all time is Raiders of the Lost Ark, followed by Close yeah. Second with Last Crusade. <laughs> and uh, so I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan and anything in that genre um, is just what I like, whether it's reading a book of that style or a movie, audio drama, although not many audio dramas out there that are quite along that line, which is one of the reasons why I want to make this one, because I want to hear mm -hmm. something like that. Um, so yeah, anything in that adventure genre, that is my my absolute favorite. No, I, I totally agree. I, I remember watching Indiana Jones. I remember how I got into it. It was my step-granddad, who's he's awesome. He's 90. He's really cool. 
and he got me the first set of the indie trilogy. I remember him showing up at my door and he actually got me into Lord of the Rings as well. But but um, I remember watching indie for the first time, just being enraptured by, you know, the world that they created and, and the character that Harrison Ford imbued. And my personal favorite is The Last Crusade because I'm a real kind of buff for like, uh, the history of the Crusades and the Holy Grail and these kind of Templar conspiracies. I think that's pretty cool. But, you know, for me, that was a big inspiration as well. Um, and I think there's something in all of us that kind of loves it when we see this kind of stuff on screen that that has kind of like goes back to that childlike wonder. And, and I think that's something that we both want to bring to this project, right? For sure. Like, I, I still remember how it felt watching Raiders for the first time. And actually I, I just bought the uh, like these limited edition, like steel book covers of oh, uh, wow. or steel editions, I should say of Raiders and the last crusade. Um, Cause I have like a shelf in my office. I wanted to kind of decorate a little bit and I liked the look of those and I didn't have them on Blu-ray yet. I still have DVDs, <laughs> but not Blu-ray. And uh, so I actually just, I put in the Blu-ray to see like just the, like the quality difference. Cause I've not seen mm. Indiana Jones in that, IDEF uh, setting it. And uh, so I just put it in only intending to watch just, you know, like the, just the opening scene of Raiders with the rolling bowler and all that. And uh, I had to like, I had to stop myself. Like, it's like, I just want to keep watching this whole movie right now, but I don't have time. Yeah. (laughs) So that definitely that, that feeling, um, I don't know. It's just something special about it. You just don't really find that with too many uh, things. I think the, the adventure genre lends itself to that same feeling. Um, if you have like different elements to it, obviously characters are really important, but, um, but like that, that feeling is really something that I hope we can capture in our series, but it's definitely a feeling that I appreciate. Like I said, whether it's a book or a movie or whatever, um, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I a hundred percent agree. And I, I love, I need to watch the movies all over again. Cause we've got obviously new Indiana Jones coming out, uh, next week, I think. I'm so excited for that and and to hopefully it makes me feel like I'm a kid again. And like we said, hopefully it's how our series makes people feel that all the family can kind of listen in and enjoy it um, and all find something in that. So I was going to ask about, you know, storytelling. Where do you kind of start with story in all of your different projects? And then more specifically, where did this story start for you? Um, well, one of the things that I would love to be able to do is actually like write something like completely. Um, but I've got mm-hmm. a bunch of small children right now. So to get in the quiet <laughs> space, like I've, I've got to have like, I got to get like focused and I've got to like really get into like the headspace to write. And so writing like a full script or a full story is just not something I have the time for right now. So what I've been doing is I've been hiring people to, well, the Shadow Project, I just used the script that was already there. Like I said, it was a remake nothing uh, mm-hmm. original there. Um, the Uncharted project, um, I worked with um, Chuck Duffy, uh, who's extremely talented, uh, extremely talented writer. Indeed. And then um, for the um, the zombie story, I worked with uh, Jeremy Ashley Pear, who's also a very talented writer. Um, but basically, I gave them like some ideas that I had that uh, maybe um, like for the Uncharted project, it was just some like the kind of overall angle that I wanted to take the story. I didn't have a certain direction with that. Um, I actually worked Mm -hmm. with uh, Miranda Ray um, a little bit at the beginning of it. She's the one that suggested that we go toward the uh, Arthur, Legends of Arthur, uh, King Arthur, which was uh, which I really liked. So we kind of developed a kernel and then I passed it on over to Chuck because Miranda had too much stuff going on. She couldn't finish it. Um, and so, uh, but he came in and just all the different thoughts that, uh, Miranda and I had been talking about, um, when I asked, you know, around to see if there's anyone else had interest in helping us finish it, Chuck was like, uh, well, I'm interested, but, um, here's some things that I would change. And here's some other ideas that I had. He sent me like four pages of like meticulously outlined notes. Wow. And it, it was beautiful to read. Cause I'm like everything <laughs> that he said, I'm like, absolutely. Like I thought this, I was wanting to do this, like almost everything that he said, well, he, he hit every bullet point that I had on my list. Um, but then he uh-huh. had some fantastic ideas. Anytime I would suggest to him something in the story, like a change from what he would send me from what he was writing. He would uh, he would not only 
like be excited about it most of the time, but then he would also like tweak it. And like, what if we did it like this way? And it was always better than my, like my mm-hmm. suggestions, you know, he would just take it to the next level. So it was very, it was a big privilege to work with him. I would do it any day again in, in a heartbeat. He was fantastic. Uh-huh. Um, Jeremy Ashley pair. I get, I gave him like an idea, like, here's the story. Um, and spoiler warning for those of you that haven't listened to that, it is a dark comedy. <laughs> so there's a big switch that happens halfway through. So it was basically, I gave him the, the idea of what I wanted the story to be the basically what happens in the story. But as far as setting what characters that we used, all that kind of stuff, all that was on him. I mean, we, we, we talked about it, went back and forth, but he is the one that came up with the idea of doing it at the local library and different things like that. And all the characters were his idea. So that was, that was fantastic. So this story, um, like for years I've wanted to do, um, or I started getting the idea for this story, you know, as I started thinking what projects would I like to do in the future, I would like to do a story, um, where obviously has to do with adventure and and looking for artifacts and things like that. But I like the, like, kind of like the team dynamic, bringing more people into it than just like one singular person. Um, Mm. I would like to, well, I mean, I like it when stories focus on different people. And if it's a series, I think having different people will, um, I think it just will appeal to more people because uh, everyone has their own traits that they like in different characters. Some people really like villains, you know, versus the heroes. So I wanted to have a good mix of both. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's just been an idea where I thought like this team that could go around the world. Um, like, I don't know if you've read any of Matthew Riley's books. Um, I, I but- have read it. Yeah, a little he's fantastic. And then some of the, the trap sequences and stuff that he goes through, like just this massive scale adventure going mm-hmm. into these old tombs that have these incredibly elaborate traps. Like I really hope he makes, gets a chance to make one of those books into a movie someday. Like the, um, I should have looked up the titles of the books I'm talking about, but Matthew Riley, at least you look him up, you'll find him. But oh, he's done, um, yeah, he's done a few. I've, I've read them. Yeah. But there's there's like a team that works together, you know, through those. Mm-hmm. Um, I also really enjoyed James Rollins' series, the Sigma Force series. Yes. Um, where they have a lot of, that's more like modern day um, kind of adventuring. Uh, so I really like those. Uh, but again, it's like a team dynamic. So I was thinking, let's do something. I really like the Indiana Jones era, like the 30s, uh, 20s, 30s, 40s. So mm-hmm. something back in that area or that sorry, that era really appeals to me. So I wanted to do something back then. Um, well, then the video game came out. So I don't know if you've played it, the strange brigade. You familiar no. with that one? No, no. I don't know. So it's kind of very similar to this idea of a team that's, you know, looking for artifacts and stuff like that. Um, and it's, uh, it's like a third person kind of a game. It's really fun. Um, okay. It's got a little bit of a story, but it's more just like a fun shooter. Um, you can do like multiplayer and things, but, um, but that game came out and I was like, oh, this is fantastic. If I'm reading about it, I'm like, this is so close to the idea that I have colorful characters who are going around, you know, doing stuff. Um, mm-hmm. so I think the series that I want to do is a little bit more grounded than what the game is. They get into a lot of like, uh, a lot of ghosts and, you know, mummies and all that kind of stuff that come at yeah. big insects that try to get <laughs> them and you have to shoot them, you know? So, um, it's a little bit more like spiritual or a little bit more, uh, uh, fantasy ish than what I want to do mm. for this series. I'm not saying it won't be any of that. Uh, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, that's where it kind of started for me looking to see like, um, well, obviously uncharted is in the same vein as Indiana Jones. So yep. what else could I make that would be in that same vein? That is something that I would like to listen to, you know, cause I, if I'm going to spend the time and the money to make something, I'd like it to be something that I'm interested in. And so a, a team dynamic <laughs> in this kind of a realm is, uh, that's what appeals to me about the idea. Mm-hmm. That's really awesome. Just like hearing the different inspirations and, and even hearing some of the things like the video game that I hadn't heard of before. Um, and I think it is, you know, fairly similar to kind of where I started. It's like we said, we, we both share this love of Indiana Jones. And I think for me, the kind of ambition and the lure for this kind of story that we've got is how can we tell something that gives people that feeling that we had when we were kids watching Indiana Jones or watching the Uncharted, playing the games, 
that thirst for adventure, but also how do we tell that in a modern way and how do we bring some of the the things that we've gained from the Marvel kind of form of storytelling whilst also keeping what we love from the kind of pulp adventure fiction kind of tales. And and like you say, that whole team dynamic, I love that because I think, you know, kind of framing it all one man, you, they kind of have to be superhuman almost. And indie is amazing and great. And we all want to be indie, but he's also when you sort of look to him, they've they've managed to get sort of dimensions to him and make him more human, but but really it makes it hard to, to connect to. And, and like you were saying with the team, there's there's always, you know, one character people will, will connect with and maybe there'll be somebody that's more funny, somebody that's more kind of more dramatic and this and that. And of course, we've got to love the villains. And I've got to say, I think we've got some amazing, amazing villains here. I'm so, yeah, I'm so excited, excited about for what we came up to with see. There. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like this whole idea about, you know, this, this kind of a team dynamic traveling around the world looking for stuff, which it was really what put you and I together in the yes. first place. So why don't you tell people about how, how that all happened? <laughs> how, yeah, how we got so, connected. so I guess if you go way back, I was about 13 and I came up with this, I just thought I really want to write my own story, like Indiana Jones kind of thing. And I want it to have like this kind of ancient legend that they, they, this character's chasing after. And I had no idea what I wanted to write. I just went on Reddit and wrote, you know, I, I want to write this thing. Um, and nobody kind of took notice of me as a 13 year old, <laughs> unsurprisingly. But this idea sort of never went away. I've, you know, I've been reading lots of books and things, we watched Indiana Jones movies, and I, I always, I just want to do this for myself. And then, I we were talking about this before we came on about how I saw your project, the Uncharted project, John, on Reddit, which must have been by absolute sheer chance because I'm I was a member of the R slash audio drama community, but I never sort of looked at the posts. And then I saw this thing Uncharted. And at the time I was really into the video games. I think I'd just, you know, been playing through them all. And I kind of said and commented on your post, that's really cool. Um but basically, aren't you going to get sued for this? Because this is like, you know, they're coming out with a movie and this and that. And we kind of spoke and, and you shared about your idea doing something original because I'd said, oh, well, would you ever consider doing something original, your own idea? And you said, yeah, you know, I've actually got something. So we connected and we realized our ideas are actually really, really similar. Um, cause the way I remember it is that we both actually ended up wanting to centering this on the Epic of Gilgamesh, um, which is kind of the main legend that we're kind of grounding this around. And it's awesome that it's, you know, coming together that, you know, I was, a uh, probably 17 or 18 at the time when we connected and, you know, you're over in America, I'm in England. And we just had these ideas that are so similar and we thought, well, let's make something really cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, like I said, I I don't have the time and really the the ability to sit down and write something like totally like by myself. And so to come across someone else that has a passion, especially for something that is so close to the same idea that I had, I just remember reading your post and thinking, hey, you know, let's. I, well, I love the collaboration process. I I, I can do that all the time. Yeah. So like, if it's if it's story ideas or if it's someone writing something and asking an opinion like that, I can do. And so I was thinking, well, you know, if you have like story ideas and if you've already thought about this, almost the exact same type. Now, if I remember right, you're initially, you want to do something like more modern day, right? Well, I was I think thinking my, my initial idea was modern day. Yeah, I wasn't. I was thinking not necessarily where we've now assessed it, because I was thinking, well, kind of indies kind of been there, done that. I kind of want to do this modern day. And if I remember correctly, I had settled on the idea or I, we wanted to do something to do with Gilgamesh and immortality, but I was leaning more towards this kind of like tree of life kind of thing at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of morphed into what it what it is now. But but yeah, I, I definitely yeah, I think was kind even, of thinking a more modern thing. Yeah, I think even initially we were like pursuing the modern day angle when we first started writing. But then yeah. we both kind of like came to the conclusion and I forget exactly how it came. I think it was just like one day you were like, you know, I think I might like your idea about the the, the 30s uh, mm -hmm. enough to switch over to that, which 
I would have been happy to do either one, but I, I'm, I'm glad we did it in the thirties. Like I just, I like yeah. that era and I know indie's been there and done that. So I don't want to just give people indie all over again. So, I mean, uh-huh. you're going to have traps, you're going to have artifacts, but I oh, think yeah. that our story is like overall. And again, like it's, it's a five season plan that we want to do. Yeah. If we can get there, <laughs> we'll see if we can even yeah. do the first one. Um, but um, if we can do all five seasons, if we can tell our complete story, I think that it will be far different from what um, people have already seen and heard. And I think people will really like mm-hmm. it. Um, I think it, I think it captures the same spirit as like something that you would see in an Indiana Jones movie, but I don't, it's not a rehashing at all of, of really anything that I've ever seen or heard. And so I think mm. the, the, smashing our two ideas together and then you know going from there i think has been really it's been really fun for me uh, but i also yeah. think it's enabled us to come up with something that is is unique as well and i think what's what's been really fun for myself is being able to kind of look into this history that, that fascinates me and sort of think how has nobody done this before because when you think about the epic of gilgamesh it is the first story in the world, like the oldest kind of ancient epic that we have in existence. It is one of the biggest epics in the world, not the longest, but one of the, like the, the biggest scope. And you sort of think this is just prime material. And I, I think what really makes our story is the characters that we've got and the unique way that we're coming at this. Because when you think about it, Uncharted is extremely similar to Indiana Jones. You have all those things you love, the traps, the this and that, the artifacts. But what makes Uncharted different from Indy is the characters. And what makes Indy special is the character of Indiana Jones, of Marion Ravenwood and all those side characters that we love, of Salah. And we've got our own characters that obviously we hope that you, the audience, are going to come to grow and love. And I think, you know, like you said, even though we're setting it in a similar time period to Indy, uh, at least the initial one. Um, I think we've got a really cool angle with the way our characters come from in his past and the way that's informed him. And I think that really kind of takes us in a unique direction. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about it. And I got to give you kudos for the Gilgamesh idea because that was yours. Um, like <laughs> Thank I, you. I knew we wanted, we had to use something from ancient history, but I wasn't perfectly set on what it was. Um, so that I definitely got to give you credit for, for that. Mm. It was a fantastic idea. Thank when you, you mentioned it, I was like, yeah, yeah, we got to do this. <laughs> well, I, I know we had talked about like being fascinated with like ancient technology and mm-hmm. things or like, you know, building the pyramids or like the Easter Island yes. statues, yeah, like yeah, yeah. mystery and, and different things, like all these different, uh, ancient artifacts that, you know, when you look at certain aspects of them, some of them appear to be connected in ways mm-hmm. that should not have been possible or like building the pyramids or how did they build it? Like even today, it would be almost impossible for us to build. And it's yeah. like, how did, how did these ancient cultures do this? And so like that whole mystery of like, who were these people exactly? You know, we, mm-hmm. we think everybody was like a, you know, a caveman and had no intelligence back then, but uh, we were wrong, you know? So <laughs> yeah. I think it's exciting that it's, it is a very grounded story. Like you say, it's a very human story. And I think it's kind of very age old because when you think about it, the Epic of Gilgamesh, what is it about? At its heart, it's about immortality. And I think today, in today's society, we, you know, time is a really big thing. We're all kind of push for time and we're all kind of wondering, what do we do with our time? What does time mean? And how can we make the most of it? And I think, there's these really kind of big questions that although we're not, you know, hoping or looking to answer some of them, I think incorporating some of that around the story of, you know, this grand adventure is really cool. And then, you know, when we go to our characters, we've got this story, um, this really relatable story. I think even though it's said in the past, we have characters that you're going to relate to in some way and, and you can connect to, and you're really going to become, you know, emotionally invested in. That's my hope. I'm always a story person, a character person, the the characters drive the story. And I think that's something that we've really kind of worked on here. Yeah. And I'm, I'm excited too, that we're not gonna, we're not going to shy away from the drama aspect of it either. I mean, we want it to be a fun, pulpy action, high adventure type of a thing. 
but there's going to be some moments that hopefully will. <laughs> there's going to be some twists. Yeah, it's yeah they're going to be some surprises. Twists, heartstring pulls, <laughs> different oh, yeah. things. So uh, hopefully. And John knows uh, that I like to yeah, make yeah. it really heartbreaking. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have me to blame if you're there crying. <laughs> yeah. I think I did put the kibosh on a couple of ideas because of that. I'm like, that's too much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you want uh, to pull me back sometimes? <laughs> I mean, not to say it wouldn't have uh, had an impact for sure, but uh, <laughs> no, no, but that's the great thing I, about the collaborative yeah. process, you know, that we are able to bounce off one another. And as, as you were saying earlier, it's one of my favorite things as well, is that I sometimes sit there and I have an idea, but I don't know where to take it. And then somebody will say something and I think, oh, that's a great idea. And we'll go off in a different direction. And then somebody else will bounce off. And that collaboration is really kind of key to keeping things creative and, and fresh. Yeah. And I do also want to, as we're talking about the collaboration process, I want to give a shout out to uh, Vince as well, who Vince, has done, yeah. uh, Johnny, who's done our story or our script. Um, you know, we approached him um, with the, our, our ideas, you know, and our story points, plot points and things like that. But he's he's taken it and made it um, made it to where we can actually, you know, record it and um, yeah. made it all possible by writing it down into an actual script, you know, translating our our ideas into something that really works. Mm. And I've really enjoyed, um, you know, how he's been willing to work with us on the script and our inputs on yeah. what he's come up with. Um, but I think he's done a fantastic job in, you know, taking something from someone else and really understanding where we're going, what we want to do, and then making it into something that's actually usable. Mm -hmm. It's done a fantastic job. Yeah. I think he's really kind of elevated the material. And I remember sitting down with him and we kind of, I think we got we got a thought that we had it almost all figured out and we came to Vince and then he kind of asked all these questions. Well, what about this? And what about this? And you sort of like, I never thought about that before. And so we hashed it out yep. and uh, kind of really constructed a really tight story. And I think, you know, kind of looking at it before and after, it's, you know, really just amazing to see the difference and um, to have the professionalism that Vince brings in and that he can work with ideas and then suggest ways in which it'll work and ways in which it may not work in audio and and make suggestions for how we could do things differently. So it's been really exciting for me. I've I've never had an opportunity to work on a script or anything like that. I'm literally just somebody who has like ideas and to be able to collaborate on that is, you know, is a dream come true. And I'm really looking forward to kind of working with Vince as we go forward with the series and, and seeing what we can all come up with and and push ourselves further. Um, and I can't wait for everyone to see that. And and it was amazing. I mean, what was it like for you, John, to hear it the first time, hear the characters and hear the auditions and reading the script? I mean, <laughs> it's it's my favorite part is when you can sit down at the the table read really and hear the different people read you know the parts for the first time um this time i didn't do auditions i, I did auditions for um the, sh the shadow project the uncharted project and the uh the zombie project we had i think we had like 333 auditions for the zombie project which i was wow. like blown out of the water I think we had like 120 i think for the uncharted which i was shocked about but then to get 300 some for the zombie one and i was like I mean, I had to, I had to get um, Sasha Bloor who helped me out with narrowing some of the auditions down because I'm like, I, I mean, well, you think about it, if you only spent one minute listening to an audition and then deciding in that minute, if you're going to use it or not, that's 333 minutes at the very least that you're going to spend just going through mm -hmm. the auditions for the parts, you know? So thank you, Sasha, for helping out with that. Um, but I didn't do auditions for this one because i uh, well i've worked with enough people now i've heard a lot of auditions now and i really thought you know i know who's really going to do well for these parts and some mm -hmm. of them i i didn't know um going into it like uh david ogradowski who is a fantastic oh, actor he's fantastic oh, i, I love... met him in uh new jersey yes. at the new jersey web fest because of the uncharted project um, oh, wow. and he was just such a kind guy and he liked what we did. And of course we won the, one of the awards or two awards there for uh, best score. That's Evan Boyerman, who's doing the score for us mm -hmm. for this. So I'm super excited about that. Uh, Zachary Horner helped out too. So he that had shares in the award for that. He didn't have the time to be able to help out in this one. 
Um, but I'm very grateful to both of them for what they did on the Uncharted project. I think that score is oh, it's so good. delicious. And I can brag it, it up because I didn't do yeah. it, you know. <laughs> so um, that, that was fantastic. But then we got also the award, uh, Sandra Espinoza, who hopefully is going to be in this series, um, maybe in, um, in the future, like um, maybe season two, that part of our plan for season two is going to include yeah. her. Um, if she has the time and if it works out, uh, if we get that far. Um, but meeting David there, he was like, Hey, you know, if you're doing stuff in the future, you need someone to act, you know, I'm, I'm in. And so I was like, the thought hit me at that moment. I'm like, you know, cause I had heard him speak and stuff and seen some of the things that he had done. And I'm like, uh, w- what do you think about, uh, playing a, uh, a certain type of character in uh, a new thing. And I kind of gave him a little details and he's going to play Muhammad for us in our pilot episode. Yeah. He's fantastic. And he was like, I'm in, I'm in. And then in the, but yeah, but during the, the table read, when you start getting everybody together, um, you know, I reached out to different people and said, would you be willing to do the parts? And then they all get together. But when you hear them the first time, sit down and like actually start reading it. That's my favorite part. Mm. <laughs> it's just really yeah. exciting. Really excited. And now it's like I hear it in their voices as well because now I associate them with the characters and they do such a great job. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 are the characters to me. They, yeah. They are the characters exactly. that we that we read. And they, they all do a fantastic job. I would go through and name everybody now, but I forgot to put a list down, so I'm probably gonna forget people, but um well you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do my best here. Let's see. Um, Okay, as you can see, I have switched to headphones so that because my uh, my earbud was dying. So, <laughs> uh, all right. So Graham Hughes, or yeah, Graham Rowett is going to play Arthur Hughes, who is our uh, main character. And I've gotten a chance to work with Graham uh, the first time uh, on the Shadow Project. And really, he I got to give him credit um, because I would not be at this point today if he would not have shared the Shadow Project or been involved in it. Um, cause I was just intending for it to be, uh, just a, a personal test really to see if it was something that I could, if, if I could create something that would translate in an audio drama, uh, way. And, uh, he agreed to voice the main character. He's supremely talented. Um, and then he said he was yes. going to share it with his followers on social media. So he's like, you better get social media. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> um, but really, I mean, if he would not have pushed me out there, then I probably would not have gone and done more. Um, like I did. So, um, he was the shadow for that. And then he was uh, our villain in uh, the uncharted project. Dorian Fabridge did a fantastic job. Um, yeah, he did. He was the main character in our zombie show that we just did savage waking obliteration. He's a sheriff Buckley again, fantastic job. Um, so he's in this series as the main character. I, I reached out and I was like, I, I know you can do it. Uh, I don't know if you're able, if you have the time, if you're willing. And he was, so I'm very thankful for that. Blows um, it out of the water. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. And then um, for uh, our lady, uh, leading lady in the story, we have Lola Morris. Um, she's played by Sarah Ruth Thomas, who I met on the zombie project. She is Janine in that one, Janine Watkins, and just killed that in the, in the zombie uh, story and so as I'm hearing her and I'm looking at you know trying to see um, you know going forward, um, I really came to the conclusion um, that she just she she would be fantastic as Lola Morris. So again, I reached out and asked you know would you be available for this and uh, she agreed and so I'm very thankful for that. Uh, just I already mentioned David Ogredowski as uh, Muhammad Mumba. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. An interesting story on that that I really failed to uh, to do justice because we should have taken pictures and all kinds of stuff. Um, we he was kind enough to agree to do the part for us, and he you know record he travels all over the place. Like I don't even know how he does all the stuff that he does, <laughs> um, but he was kind enough to go and record the part for us. And when he sent it to me, something happened in the recording to where there were parts of it that I couldn't use. And I I tried to fix it. Um, You know, people say, just fix it and post. It's not always possible. (laughs) Something happened and there were some parts I just couldn't use. So there was like several vital lines that somehow just we couldn't recover the stuff. And so I was like, you know, hey, 
um, you know, he was in the Pittsburgh area and I'm up in Buffalo, New York and out uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, for those of you that don't know. And, uh, we're it's about four and a half hours away. And I was like, Hey, do you think there's any way that we could meet up like halfway somewhere? And like, I can set up my recording stuff in my van. <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm not going to kidnap you or anything. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, do you think we could do this and like meet halfway and record? And he was totally game for it. So we met and we literally recorded his part. We ended up like redoing like the entire thing. And he was willing to spend like, like the majority of the day, you know, doing that for me. Um, oh, wow. Like I said, just a super decent guy. We went out and got amazing. Eat, talked about, you know, his stuff that he's doing. And uh, I'm so it was a fantastic time. We didn't get one picture of the whole thing. Neither one of us. <laughs> it was really dumb. Um, so <laughs> that was quite an adventure. And I'm very grateful to him for that. Um, then we have uh, Bashir Mamba, who's his son in the drama. That's played by Caleb Bressler, who's a very talented uh, young man. I actually um, learned about him from J.D. Sutter from the uh, Audio Theater Central and um, reached out to him. And he did a fantastic job. I had some different ideas. So he and I, we went back and forth a bunch of different times about how uh, to portray this character. So he was very patient with me, but I think he did a fantastic job. Very, very enjoyable, his performance on that. And then uh, Jonathan Cook is uh, Gilgamesh in our story, because uh, we do have some flashbacks mm. and things that we'll be dealing with some stuff that happens. Don't want to give Spoiler too much alert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, But Jonathan Cook is extremely talented. And uh, so he is the voice of Gilgamesh for us. Um, and then uh, Alistar Mackey is, uh, and I never pronounce this name correctly how do you say is it Utnapsh Utnapshim oh Utnapshim you say it you oh, say I, it right <laughs> I'm still gonna get this wrong uh Utnapshim I'm pretty sure it's something like that I we'll say it we'll, we'll make sure <laughs> we they say know, it right should... in the drama <laughs> yeah <laughs> but <laughs> but that one you like I always guy. say I it the wrong to way to like, that one up before <laughs> So yes, yeah. with Nash Patim or something like that. But anyway, uh, if you're familiar with the story, um, then you kind of know who he is. Now, whether or not we're going to portray him as the uh, Epic of Gilgamesh uh, portrays him, you just have to wait and see. Um, but an interesting story about Alistair is that he auditioned for my Shadow Project back in the day. And I since that was my first project and I was listening to the auditions for that one, I listened to every one of those auditions uh, so many different times. And um, I mean, but that was, that was years ago. It was like 2018 uh, 2017 or 2016 when I was first starting that. And so when I, um, I was actually talking to Graham Rowett about a character and he was like, you need to get in touch with Alistair. He like, he's really good. And so I reached out to him, not really putting two and two together. And uh, I approached him with the project. He was all for it. And he has a he has a fantastic voice. <laughs> I should check out some of his stuff on the, like YouTube and uh, just a fantastic voice. And so I reached out and he was totally game for it. And then he said, you know, I don't know if you remember this, but I auditioned for your shadow project back in the day. And so I went back and I listened to it. And I'm like, yes, you did. I totally remember that. <laughs> so... It's a very small world. Full circle moment. <laughs> yeah, pretty wild. Um, and then uh, John Doyle is uh, Miguel in the uh, pilot episode. John Doyle, of course, played uh, Nathan Drake in my Uncharted project. Absolutely phenomenal job with that. Um, to me, he sounds so much like Nathan Drake. He just has the same attitude oh, and does. energy as Nolan North. I would have loved, I would have loved to see him get in an interview with nolan north so you'd have like oh, amazing it'd be like nolan north interviews nolan north you know like the spider-man meme <laughs> or, or nathan drake interviews nathan drake i mean but that, that would have been so yeah funny. but um but he's a fantastic voice actor and i love working with him and uh, i have some ideas for him for a different character as well uh, but major spoiler in that not gonna get into that right now <laughs> and then uh william english the third he's uh he plays in the pilot it's a it's a smaller part but um he does a fantastic job as the friend of Gilgamesh. It's in the very opening scene, which is actually out. Um, like if you go to our podcast feed, 
Invicta Digital yes. presents the Invicta Collective. You can hear the teaser and you can hear William English and uh, Jonathan Cook and Alistair Mackey all in that scene. They're brilliant together. Um, but yeah, so that's that's our crew for the pilot. We'll definitely have more if we get a chance to do the entire first season. Um, but those are that's our crew for the, uh, for the as far as the actors go. Obviously, you doing a major part with the story. You and I collaborating on that. Finch, Vince Dejani doing the script for us. And then, of course, Evan Boyerman with the music, uh, which the main theme is out for free if you want to go and listen to it. And yes. Again, just it's like fantastic. A, a goosebump raising uh, job. So say, you get chills. <laughs> yeah, I do. Listen to that. Yeah, <laughs> I do. He did a fantastic job with that. And so I think we're about right now with the pilot. We are about, I'm going to say about 50% done with the music and so as he's able to okay. get that finished you know we're we're getting close to being able to release it so i'm really looking forward to that so that's the last thing to come is it? the music and then we're much the pretty much shows yeah. on the road there'll be a lot of a lot of tweaking of different sound design elements and things once the music comes in um but i'm mm -hmm. trying to work on that as he sends me the music and things so it's uh yeah we're, we're getting there we're getting there <laughs> it's exciting so when you're uh, editing the kind of everything, all the different sounds, and I know it's a common can sort of complaint nowadays in the modern era in the cinema, I can't hear it. The explosions are too loud. I can't hear what they're saying. How do you as a kind of sound designer and the director kind of work out exactly uh, how you're going to balance everything that's going on? Obviously, we've got some action scenes and some little bits going off, popping off. How do you kind of balance that all out? That is the trickiest part of the whole thing for me. Um, it's, I mean, I like it because it's fun. It's a challenge, yeah. but it really is a puzzle that you have to put together for every scene. Cause you have to have like, there's different frequencies that different sounds have. And if you put too much on one frequency, it can almost have like a, like a cancellation effect on sound. Like there's all kinds of weird things mm -hmm. that happen when you start combining all <laughs> these sounds and so sometimes like you literally can go in like for some of the water scenes like I did for <clears throat> like for the Uncharted project, um, like opening scene, there's all this water that's going on. But then it was it was canceling out the music, like all these different frequencies. So I actually wow. went in and used uh, some plugins that you can use with the sound program and removed some of the frequencies that the music needed to really come through. So you can do things like that. Um, then there's, I mean, you can do volume adjustments on every single detail. So sometimes sound effects, they just don't carry through no matter what you do. It's like, this is the wrong kind of sound. You can't, this won't work. And so you either have to, um, you know, like make a different sound or you know, like find a library somewhere that has uh, like a different or just like a like the same sound but uses different frequencies than what you've been using and mm. so there's just it's it is a, it's like a puzzle that you got to put together and once i get it down to where i think it's good then i try to run it by a lot of different people <laughs> <laughs> because uh, especially people that don't know the script because i think a lot of times um editors get so uh well they memorize the whole scene because you've played it a million times in your mixing and so yeah. you know what the person is saying. So you don't, there's no wonder, there's no first, there's, you don't need to comprehend what they're saying. You already know. Mm -hmm. So then when you pass it along to somebody else, that person has no clue. And so they don't have that benefit of knowing what's going on. And so that's when the explosions might be a little too loud because the editor knew what <laughs> they were saying, even if the explosions were totally destroying the dialogue, the editor still understood it. So that's why I like to run it by fresh ears and say, if you're coming into this, just mm. the first time comprehension, how, how does it work? I, I don't like putting the dialogue so far forward that the music and the sound effects feel like they take a back seat to it. Cause that to me yeah. kind of ruins, it ruins the immersion. Like a lot of the stuff that I listen to these days, their music and the sound effects are fantastic, but the dialogue, at least to me is, is so far forward and i'm talking about audio not necessarily music or uh, movies it's typically reversed with movies yeah. but um but some of the the 
stuff in the audio drama world it's like man this this music i want to hear more of this music in the scene i want to hear more of these sound effects um so it's it's very tricky to find a balance and i'm not saying i always do it right but i try to run it by uh people that know more than me and i try to run it by people who have never heard anything about it and see if they can tell um what people are saying and if they can hear everything going on so i try to get a bunch of different opinions before i finalize the mix so how long does it kind of like take you roughly overall like just how long do you spend of your life doing this and until it's done you just go until it's done i i couldn't even begin to put hours on it because the problem is too you never know where you're going to run into a problem and so yeah. a scene that might be a massive scene takes however many hours but then you get into another scene that's hardly a challenge that you think but then it ends up taking you three times what this massive yeah. scene took and it's just depending on you know just how things work together and then do you like it in the end sometimes i'll put something together and just say i i just don't like it there's something that just doesn't sit right with me about it so you just mm -hmm. never know you just never know well, I think that's the exciting part, uh, I guess, of kind of doing all this is that you never know exactly what's going to come out of it. And, you know, even just from myself hearing things from the first time, it's just amazing to kind of hear something that you've had in your head for so long and see the story going in so many different directions that even I didn't expect when I first started this. And I think that's part of the excitement and just one of the best things about collaborating with yourself and everyone that's been involved in this project. Oh yeah. It's, it's exciting. I mean, it's definitely, like you said, there's, we've come a long way from our first discussions oh, yeah. <laughs> and if we get to do the whole series, I'm sure the whole thing will, will morph as we go along. I mean, we have, we have the heart of the story. We have where we're headed. Mm. Um, and I think it's a fantastic story. It's just, it's exciting to see how it gets better really along the way. Yeah. It, it just, everything that, um, we do and the, the collaboration process, one of the reasons I like it so much is because it just, it improves everything. You know, yeah. if, if I, if I did have the time to sit down and write something all by myself, you know, I probably maybe wouldn't even like it as much as I do, you know, these projects where you can collaborate with other people and get their perspectives and their takes and their fantastic ideas. And I, I don't, I'm, I've not had a bad collaboration experience yet. And um, mm. I, I, maybe I will someday, <laughs> but this, this has all been, it's been great for me all the way up through this point. Yeah. And, and, and for me too, you know, this is my first ever experience of doing anything like this. And I think it's really kind of clear the heart that everyone has for this. And it's all about elevating, elevating the storytelling, the characters, the action, and just giving everyone a great time. And it's been really amazing to be a part of that and, and see that process uh, kind of come along and yeah hopefully it carries on going like this because it's, it's been a blast and it's really given me so many amazing opportunities and inspired my own kind of storytelling um which is really exciting and i can't wait to kind of see where our plans come to fruition because i know we've you know we've got an end in mind for the whole of the five seasons and hopefully we'll get there and hopefully it will uh give you a journey that's worth your time Oh, yes. And I think it will be. And, and speaking of elevating the project, I would be uh, or we would both be um, remiss if we did not mention Matthew's Markers, who's done some of the uh, character art for us uh, of our two main characters <laughs> yeah. for now, um, Arthur and Lola. But uh, Matthew's Markers on Instagram, um, very talented. If funny that the name is the same as yours, you know, <laughs> so, <and then> he, <laughs> I believe he's in the UK as well. So I figured. Oh, that. well. Um, so, but he's done I'm just a fantastic talented. job. Like he, uh, <laughs> if you go and look at his Instagram, like he's got so much fantastic art. Like I, like I can barely draw a stick figure, barely. Yeah, um, me too. <laughs> and I mean, this guy is so ridiculously talented. Um, when I was when I was thinking of like, can we get some character art done, and who could do it, what style, and just one day I was like, you know. I'm going to reach out to this guy. I don't know if it's even possible that he would be, you know, up for something like this, but he was totally up for it. And so he basically took ideas that you and I had 
as far as the mm-hmm. character. He sent we went back and forth about some ideas and different things, hairstyles, clothing, and all kinds of stuff. And then yeah, he comes I up different with sketches. Yeah, <laughs> and he comes up with the characters that we have, which is just fantastic. Really makes it seem more official. And of course, like they're they're so high quality. Like I I could never do anything like that. Yeah. So like I mean, just very impressive work. So thank you. Matthew for being able to do those characters for us. Yeah, I remember, you know, it's like hearing it for the first time, seeing those characters, it really kind of nailed kind of the vibe that we're going for. And it was amazing. It was funny. I remember looking at some of the, the differences towards the end and having to choose between them all. And they're all so similar, but it's amazing how many different hairstyles and how many different subtleties that can make such a massive difference. And, and I'm they're, really they're kind of also, proud of the way that we got it. <laughs> yeah, they, they were also good too. It's like, well, yeah, them, you know. <laughs> they could all, you know, all work. It's just, yeah, we had to find the one that was our character. And I'm so proud of you know, how it's come out because it really is our characters, you know, it really yep. fits it. Um, yep. and it's, yeah, it's just really amazing to actually see it come to fruition and, and everything that's happening. Yeah, I can't go over it. <laughs> but it, it all depends on if we're able to get it funded. Because uh, mm-hmm. I, my shadow project was done by volunteer basis because it was just a passion project and short and I just posted it. We weren't going to try to make any money off of it. Uh, same thing with the Uncharted project. Much, much larger in scale. So people were much more generous with their time for that. But again, it's something that we are we haven't tried to make a penny off of it. We won't because, you know, that'd be breaking copyright law. We don't want to do that. <laughs> um, but uh, that would have cost, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to do a production oh, like yeah. that. Um, if you were to ask like a studio to, to put it together, like I, I, I shudder to think like, I mean, I've like 25 grand here in the States is, is, is like nothing or it's, it'd be like standard, like, oh, probably at least 25 grand to do something like that. Um, so we didn't have to spend that. I mean, we'd never been able to make it if it wasn't for the generosity of everybody on that project. But again, no one's making any money off of it. It's a passion project. Um, but this project is something that we're going to try to make money off or I'm going to try to make money off of um, <laughs> because I want to be able to pay people a decent wage. You know, I, I don't want to keep asking people to do stuff for free, but I would also like to make a lot of stuff. Um, you know, you are excited to have an opportunity to do something on a project like this, but I'm very thankful for your ideas. I'd love to be able to pay you a a, a, a a very fair wage for sharing your ideas on the, on the story, you know, same thing with Vince yeah. for writing it and all of our actors for acting in it, Evan for composing a, uh, I mean, I mean, could you imagine if we had to hire an orchestra to do what Evan does? Oh my God. I but, tried, 25 but, grand would just be for the hiring in the hall. You know what but, I mean? But like, Evan is so talented. Like would an orchestra even sound better? You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you have to get, you have to pay a lot of money to get something that sounds that good. So yeah. I would love to pay everyone um, a proper wage for helping to make these projects. Well, I'm not independently wealthy. It's, <laughs> in victim digital is 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 me <laughs> um so we are going to try to do a crowdfunding campaign uh through kickstarter for this project to make season one and like i said we have a five season plan uh we don't mm-hmm. want to take the story and just go on forever and ever and ever as long as we can do because we feel like we want to have a clear ending a clear end and yeah. um so we have a good vision for it, but we're going to try to raise money, um, you know, one season at a time. Um, so once we release the pilot and everybody gets a chance to hear it, then we're going to have a Kickstarter campaign and see if we can fund the rest. We'd like to do about seven or eight episodes uh, per season. Um, and I don't think since, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not a huge studio out there. I don't have a big <laughs> name out there and things. So I don't, I don't think we would be able to make a goal that would let us fund the entire series all at once. Now, if we do, hey, that's fantastic. <laughs> that <would be laughs> we'll put that great. as a stretch goal or something. But <laughs> if we could at least fund the season one, I think people would have a chance to listen to it and then really 
um, I think they would fall in love with the characters that we've created. And I think that mm-hmm. they would be more than happy to come around for the other seasons and things. But um, again, like it's, it's something that um, like I would do for free because I like, uh, I love audio editing. It's just something I've done like all my life. And I would do it as a hobby if I didn't, you know, do it mm-hmm. for, you know, um, if, if I didn't do it for money. So, but I can't, I can't make things to this scale and with this much uh, quality unless I'm willing to pay people or if I make people do fantastic work for nothing. And I'm just, I'm not that kind of a Mm. person. It's not fair to people. You know, they're going to put the effort into it to make it sound so fantastic. I want to make sure they get paid for it, you know? So, um, So, yeah, so we're going to try to do a Kickstarter campaign and hopefully people will like the pilot enough to sign on for the whole first season. And I think if they do sign on for the first season, they will be very, very satisfied with what we have planned for them. And then uh, I'd be much more optimistic about seasons two, three, four and five (laughs) getting funded. Oh, definitely. Number one off the ground. But I think there's going to be so many different things that you won't expect going in. You're going to get, you know, the action, the adventure, perhaps a bit of romance. Um, you're going to get everything that you know and love, but also, you know, some surprises, some twists and hopefully, you know, a lot of heart. I think that's something that's, that's uh, both of us really want to get in there. It's, it's a lot of heart and and ground it around these characters. And yeah, you got, you know, the, the archaeology and these kind of fantastical legends, but also, you know, rooting out in a, in a truth and, and making that something relatable um, and, and more realistic, I think it's something we're aiming for. And, and so I'm so excited to see that and and to hear the pilot and and hopefully you guys can see our vision and see where we're going with this. And I'm so excited for my one line to get in there. You know the line I'm talking about, John. <laughs> I do. I was like, it has to stay. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to get this line in there. I, I need to. It's so bad, it's good. <laughs> This, that's the thing I'm most yeah. excited to hear. I think. Um, for sure. Is there anything you want to tease for our, our audience about um, the story in the pilot, where our characters kind of start and, and share, um, yeah, a little bit about that, just to just wet our our audience's appetite. Mm-hmm. Well, this is kind of difficult to do without thinking about without it too spoiling. much ahead of time. I don't want to spoil <laughs> anything. Um, but we are going to get to see, uh, well, there's the teaser out already that people can listen to, uh, which lets you Mm -hmm. know a little bit of something that went on with Gilgamesh, you know, in the past, although it's cryptic enough that you don't really understand the whole thing. You understand what happens in the scene, but you don't really understand why. And so those answers will come, um, but you just don't get them right off the bat. Where's the fun in that? You know, you got to. (laughs) <laughs> have some mystery going We've on. We've got five course. seasons to drag it out, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, and I do want to answer all the questions uh, that everybody Absolutely. has at the end. That's the goal, to have every single question answered. But um, but we're going to get to meet our characters, um, at least the characters that are in the pilot, not all the characters in the season, but the characters for the pilot. We're going to kind of figure out uh, how they get started on the adventure, obviously. And we're going to give... Um, we're going to end on a cliffhanger, obviously, because so, yeah, they're getting they're getting a little bit of you, trouble. You kinda, you There's a little spiciness. To, you need to have <laughs> people wanting more. If you can't give them all the answers in the pilot, then they don't need to do anything else. Um, but it's also fun to end the episode on a cliffhanger because you know the next one's oh, yeah. coming. But um, but there is some character development in there. We get to learn a little bit about the about the background of our lead characters a little bit, not again, Mm -hmm. not in full because we can expand into that later, but some of their uh, past, um, why they are the way they are today, you know, because of some of the things they faced in the past. Um, And then of course you get to meet some of their friends, which is nice. Uh, But I don't know how much more I can actually say as far as what happens without. Yeah. I think, no, I think think it's a good little teaser. (laughs) Yeah. You don't want to spoil the whole thing. Um, I think it's going to be a fantastic experience. You can get the whole family around to have a listen. Uh, we should maybe even have a listening party when it first comes out or something like oh, that. We will. Be pretty cool. We definitely will figure yeah. out something like that. Yeah. 
sure. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be the experience. And like I said, something the whole family can enjoy. And uh, we'll leave you with a little bit of excitement at the end there. And um, hopefully you get to know some of these characters a little bit. And you'll want them to get to know them more enough that uh, hopefully we can fund this thing. Yes, yes, for sure. And I'd just be really excited to see, you know, be able to make sure everybody was compensated because everybody has turned in just phenomenal work, you know, from oh, yeah. with the ideas, you've had fantastic ideas, Vince with oh, the script. Thank you. And I mean, all the actors and actresses, I mean, are are fantastic. And Evan with the music, like, I feel like we're not taking a back seat to, uh, to like any studio. Like, I, I feel like, the, the, the people are that have been willing to help us with this are just the are uber talented and it's just a privilege to be able to work with them um, but I would, since they're willing to lend their talents like that i would love to be able to um you know pay them but then also be able to make more you know so um, hopefully we can have uh we definitely i've got a I have another secret project in the works so i'm not going to name that on the air mm-hmm. but uh super excited about that one um and I want to make sure that there's more in the future, you know, just keep on making exciting things for people to, to listen to. So, um, this is our, this is our attempt at starting something. Definitely. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's a very good, hopefully a very good attempt. Um, Shall but see. yeah, <laughs> we should see three years in the making. We do our um, best. Now yes. we need it to finish line. <laughs> um yeah it's it's so exciting uh it's been wonderful kind of having a discussion and reminiscing about how it's all come together and sharing some of the exciting stuff with you guys um do you want to share again the kind of link for where people can go to find the teaser more information your other projects as well yep if they go to invictimdigital.com that will have all of the uh, original content that we've talked about going forward. Anything they want to hear about what we're doing is going to be found at InvictimDigital.com. Um, you can look up Invictim Digital Presents um, on any podcast um, app or platform that you use. It's out there everywhere. Um, our our zombie show is on there right now, Savage Waking Obliteration. There's more about that on the website. Um, there's the teaser for our the Invicta Collective is on that same feed. So it's all right there in one spot, Invicta Digital Presents, or you could search Savage Waking Obliteration or the Invicta Collective. It should come up. Uh, but there's links on the website to that. Um, we're on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Instagram as uh, Invicta Digital as well. So if you want to get updates first, that's probably where you're going to see them. Um So, yeah. Uh, Well, if you want to listen to the Uncharted project that you'll have to go to unchartedthk.com and the Shadow project is at uh, the Shadow Remake.com. I think that's everything. (laughs) Yeah, so it's definitely well worth your time to go back and listen to some of John's other projects. They're all amazing. I still need to catch up on the zombie one, um, but they're all fantastic. Um, And makes you very excited to see what we're going to come up with here. Um, sure. John, thank you. It's been a great time uh, chatting about this and looking forward to when we can finally release our little projects out in the world. Yep, indeed. I appreciate you being willing to make this happen and again for everything that you've done Absolutely. on the project as well. It's amazing. No, thank you for the opportunities. It's been brilliant. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you and we will talk to you later and can't wait to release it. Yeah, me too. All right. Bye. Awesome. Bye.